वक्रतुंड महाकाय कोटि सूर्य समप्रभा निर्विघ्न कुरु मे देवा सर्वकार्यु सर्वदा श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरे ओ वेलकम बैक टू एवरी वन टू दिस सेकेंड एंड द कंक्लूडिंग सेशन ऑफ दिस वीकेंड Uh, weekend with wisdom uh, we have with us again dr shrinivas acharya ji thank you sir for joining us uh, we are very grateful to you for making time for these sessions uh, we had a wonderful session in the morning and uh, uh, very eager to uh, continue that uh, discussion that uh, you know that reflection upon raso prasanna today uh, in this session so without further any uh, further delay i'll uh, request you to uh, please go ahead and uh, start the session yeah. <laughs> shri gurave nama so in the morning <clears throat> we discussed how a rasopasaka sees all the concepts which are floated in bhagavad gita according to the raso pasak bhagavad gita is a sopana for bhagavatam it is a moksha shastra moksha grantha shri krishna at the end is saying that sarva dharman parityajya mame kam sharanam vrata ahan tva sarva pape bhyo moksha ishyami ma sucha so arjuna was uh, worried because of his attachment ignorance he was uh, coming out with the arguments false arguments saying that uh, all this killing which i am supposed to do killing my guru killing my brothers it is uh, isn't it papa so shri krishna at the end told him that you for, uh, surrender to me and then act on my behalf as a nimitta matra and i will take care of all the papas i will rem- remove all the papas from you so removing all the papas is like uh, you know liberating one from the sinful activity and so we have discussed how the spiritual path cannot take place unless one is surrendered to a guru and krishna hari and guru you have to surrender because the instrument that you have is man mind and this mind is the product of matter so vairagya for matter is not possible for it and since it is not atma and uh, so reconstitution with atma and then uh, meditation on the absolute is also not possible for the mind so somebody external an external agency has to act on it so you surrender to bhagavan and guru and this guru also is a realized soul so that is why he is a divya purusha he has got the uh, swarup shakti of bhagavan he has got prema of bhagavan and uh, when you surrender to the guru guru give the three things to you he gives you instruction upadesha so that you understand what is shri krishna and what is your relationship with you sambandha abhideya prayojana sambandha means your relationship with the absolute shri krishna abhideya means what do you need to do what is the process for getting connected with him and then receiving his mercy through your guru and then attaining mamatva or prema and what is the prayojana prayojana is prema dharma artha kama and moksha are the four purusharthas 
uh, about which we hear from Shastra, we uh, have, because of our identification with the body, as I told you in the morning, it is very natural for the desire to be produced in the mind. Desire for the sense gratification of the sense objects through your senses is natural. And uh, the conscious entity always seeks happiness because it is the product of uh, Brahman, which is happiness, Ananda, Anando Brahme Tivejanat. It seeks happiness and it seeks unlimited happiness and permanent, ha everlasting happiness. And this happiness it is seeking in the material world, through the body, through sense gratification. And it's not possible to have sense gratification uh, in the body. Every, whether you consume something or hear something, everything has a limited amount of happiness that it gives you. It's not, it cannot give unlimited happiness. That is why the mind keeps on um, going for other things for uh, sense, uh, its pleasure. And this karma in the material world can be fulfilled only if you have artha. The material products, things, which you can attain through wealth. And as I told you in the morning, that when the mind desires something, it does not take into consideration the laws of nature. The material world has laws of nature. And uh, according to the material uh, karma siddhanta, the material laws of nature, that if you disturb the laws of nature, it becomes papa. And if you go in favorable, if you protect the laws of nature, it becomes punya. And the punya will give you happiness, good results in the future. And the papa gives us unhappiness, misery in the future. The result of punya and papa we receive in the future and which is in the form of happiness and unhappiness. So the Veda uh, and Itihasas, Puranas suggest that, uh, as that we fulfill our uh, desire, artha and uh, kama, these two purishastha through dharma, dharma arthascha kamascha. Mahabharata says. So through with dharma you get artha and kama, fulfillment of artha and kama. So then dharma has also become a purushartha. And then finally uh, the shastras, Upanishads and all these things say that however much you may attain, do dharma and attain sense gratification, it's all temporary. And we are all seeking for permanent happiness, eternal happiness. And uh, even though we don't want miseries in the material world, because we are breaking the laws of nature, we get misery. And uh, these miseries are three kinds. As I mentioned to you in the morning, the miseries which come because of ourselves, Adhyatmika Klesha, the miseries which come because of others, Adi Bhautika Klesha and the miseries which come because of uh, natural calamities, which is, which is Adi Daivika Klesha. We are getting these three kinds of miseries because every individual is connected to oneself, others and nature. And whatever activity that we do uh, affects them. I'll give you a simple example. We don't have to go to the extent of cigarette smoking, which for many is bad. You know, they don't, for some, it is uh, normal for them. We disturb ourselves when we are smoking and we are disturbing others also who are near to us and we are polluting the atmosphere also. But even a, a normal thing like using mobile phone, when we use mobile phone and we feel like talking to somebody, we call them. So that when we activate it, it is creating radiation and it is uh, damaging my brain. So I'm disturbing myself. And when I'm talking to the other person, 
it is disturbing the other person. And this radiation is also contaminating the atmosphere. It is creating vibrations in it and it's creating negative energy. So every activity that we do, because we are connected to ourselves, others and nature, we do a three threefold disturbance and because of which we get as a reaction threefold miseries. Our, when our brain is damaged, we get misery. If we consume something which our tetragni cannot digest, so we get diseases. First, we get delicate tarona vyadhulu, and then if we overlook them, and if we don't uh, uh, change our um, pattern of food, then they become dirga kalika vyadhi. So they become chronic diseases. So we suffer. So we suffer because of ourselves, mind and body, others and nature. So we are seeking happiness, but we are being chased by these three kinds of miseries. So then the question comes that, uh, uh, how do I get only happiness and never get the misery? Through Dharma, we are getting Artha and Kama, but because we are not getting unlimited happiness, so we keep, uh, you know, the mind keep producing desires and we keep disturbing and the intensity of our destroying the nature, disturbing the nature keeps increasing. And we get more and more misery. The more we consume, the fulfill our desires, the, the more we get misery. So then the question comes that how do I become free from these miseries and uh, attain only happiness and eternal happiness so that I don't have to try for it again and again. Even if you are for doing yajnas to you know, attain swarga, which seems to be a, an everlasting happiness. You know, it, it lasts for a long time. But there, from there to Kshine Punya Marchaloka Vishanti. After the Punya is over, you fall down again. Again, you have to do 100 Yajnas. And then again, you go there, again, you fall down. So, uh, when the individual realizes that this is, there is a lot of Shrama in what I'm getting, and that too, whatever I'm getting is temporary. So, how do I get permanent happiness? And... How do I become absolutely free from misery? Atyantika dukkha nivritti. How do I become absolutely free from misery? No tinge of misery, only happiness and that to permanent happiness. Once I get it, I don't have to do anything else. This state I want. So when this uh, question comes, then the Upanishad take us from Karma Kanda to Vedanta. And in Vedanta, Moksha, is described for that all this problem that that our uh, fulfilling of the desire karma for which we need artha for which we have to do dharma all this is happening because of our identification with the body and we are not the body we are seeking permanent and eternal happiness because we are atma satchidananda ananda is our nature right so that is why we are seeking that. But because we are misidentifying ourselves with the body, we are seeking that ananda, eternal ananda uh, in the body. And because we are ananda swarupa, we don't want misery. So then it says, the Vedanta asks us to, Bhagavad Gita, as I told you, asks us to reconstitute ourselves as our true nature, which is Atma. And then... Uh, when we do our sadhana, whichever, whatever sadhana which is prescribed, we become liberated from our identification, as I told you in the morning, identification with the body in ahankara and ignorance in buddhi and desire in the mind and the activity. When there is no desire, there is no activity. We become free from our uh, activity, which makes us to go against nature. So we become liberated. And then there are various discussions about how to go about this, uh, whether we should do karma or not. So we won't go into all those things because we have to enter into Bhagavata now. So I'm giving you a prelude. So dharma, artha, kama and moksha are the purusharthas. And Vyasadeva has divided Veda into parts, angas, and then he has written Itihasa Purana. After writing all these things, he was 
still dissatisfied and uh, his guru sage narada came to him and then asked him why are you unhappy so he said vyasa deva said that i have written all this literature but still i am happy this is because i have uh, not written enough about the divya leelas of the god yeah, narada also tells him that you have proposed dharma artha and kama and moksha and uh, you have not written when you when we say that you have not written much about the gunas of the lord or leelas of the lord which means that you have not written about the prema the love which lord krishna and in all his forms relishes and the love which the devotees relish with him and the play of love which takes place between the devotees and the lord you have not uh, written much about them most of them most of the uh, your work consists of uh, um, the dharma that we have to follow in order to fulfill artha and kama and then finally get liberated from this world and then vyasa deva uh, starts meditating before writing this taking up this task of writing the leelas of uh, god Sri Krishna and his devotees, which is Bhagavata. Bhagavata Purana. Bhagavata means uh, it is a work about lot also. It also means that it is about the Bhagavata, which means the devotees of the Lord, who possess love for, for the Lord and then release that love. So he meditated. Bhakti Yoga in a Sanyak Paranihite Amale Apashat Purusham Purna Mayamcha Yadapasayam. Yaya sammohito jiva atmanam trimunatmakam manute paropi anartham tatkritam cha upapadjate. Anartho pashamam sakshad bhakti yoga madokshade lokasya ajanataha yasya chakre satvata samhidam. So this, uh, this is what is written about Vyasa Deva's meditation. So what he saw in his meditation is that bhakti yoga in a samyak. So he performed bhakti yoga, which, which means that meditation on the leelas of the Lord. As I told you, that rasopasana consists of extracting the love from his naam, rupa, gundalila, dham and parikar. So he, and that practice is called as bhakti yoga. And this bhakti has four limbs, karma, jnana, sannyasa and dhyana. I told you in the morning session. Uh, those who have not... Uh, 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 heard morning attended the morning session they can go back and get those basics from that so that they understand this portion well so he saw Vyasadeva saw uh, that being pure bhakti yoga samjha pranite amale means having purified completely through bhakti yoga bhakti yoga whatever in antakarna uh, uh, we have uh, the desires, material desires that go against the nature and if these desires are not fulfilled, we get krodha and if they are fulfilled, we get lobha, more fulfilled than we want and we accumulate so many things of sense gratification and we develop moha for them, our family, wife, children, parents and uh, our um, properties, our power, wealth, the bank balance, all these things we get attached, which is called as moha. And then the more we accumulate, we get uh, uh, mother. And then if we see somebody else, when we see somebody else having more than more samagri for sense gratification than us, we develop matsarya. So these six things contaminate us. And uh, they uh, always make us to go against the nature and they give us their anarthas, they give us misery. Artha means prayojana. Anartha means which, that which goes against the prayojana. What we are seeking when we are fulfilling the desire or when we are accumulating all these things, we are seeking happiness. But these six negative qualities which come to us, which are born in us because of the identification for the body, with the body, they contaminate us and then they do not allow us to practice love, which is the nature of consciousness. I told you in the morning, the nature of consciousness is love. And when we release that love, we get natural bliss. This is called as prema. This uh, uh, love for our object of love, which is Sri Krishna, is called as prema. 
And prema is the true nature of consciousness. And that we try to fulfill in the material world also when we have relationships uh, in the material world. But these six qualities, Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Madama, Chari, which develop because of the identification with the body, they contaminate them. They contaminate this prema. So, by doing bhakti yoga, by practicing, by doing rasopasana, he purified his heart, which means that all these negative qualities which are there in the my heart, which do not allow us to practice this pure uh, mamatva, really this pure mamatva for the Lord, they got cleansed. And having been purified like that completely, then he saw uh, the absolute truth. So he got love, so he got the, he saw the absolute When you have love for Sri Krishna, that is when you can have his darshan and you can see his lila. So what he saw is that Apanchat Purnam Purusham Sri Krishna, Maya Amcha Yadapasman, he saw Maya also. Maya who is under his shelter. Maya is his Shakti. And he saw uh, Yaya Sammohito Jeeva. He saw Jeeva also. Jeeva is Bhagavan's Amsha. Mamai Vamsho Jeeva Loke. Bhagavan's Amsha and Maya is his Shakti. And this Jeeva is uh, enamored by this Maya, is influenced by this Maya. Yeah, Sammohito Jeeva, Atmanam Trigunatma Kamanute. As I told you in the morning, this Maya, because of with these two Shaktis, Avaranatmika Shakti, it covers the consciousness of uh, the Jeeva. It makes it forget that it is Atma and not the body. And then it gives a different identity. Uh, the jiva identifies it himself with the, the body. He considers himself body which he is not and he forgets that he is atma which he is. And, and even though he is para, this jiva is para means he is beyond prakriti. He is, he is also divya like lord as an anshav, as a conscious entity. This conscious entity is aprakrita vastu. It is divya. It is not uh, connected to or part of Prakriti at all. It is distinct from the matter. So in that sense, it is Divya. So even and Para. Para means Para um, beyond Prakriti. Even though he is Para, this Jiva is thinking that he is Trigunatmaka. Trigunatmaka means this Maya, material nature, is characterized by three Gunas, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. So he considers himself as Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. And then Anartham, Tatkritam, Chaukupajyate. As a result, he gets anarthas. Anarthas means, first of all, he, uh, he loses his identity as Atma and he considers as body. And then he gets, he has ignorance. And then uh, he develops desire. With desire, he develops all the six qualities, as I told you. And these six qualities are against the prema. He possesses, as an Atma, he should possess prema and then relish it. And that is artha. Release, releasing that prema, but he is now having anarthas, kamakrodha, lopa, moha, madamachare, which are against this prema, which contaminate this prema and which do, do not allow an individual to practice prema. I can give you examples to establish it, but I hope that you can understand with a little bit of your Vedantic background how this kamakrodha come in between your practice of uh, uh, prema. I have, a, if somebody wanted a detailed explanation of it, I have a, this Rasopasana series in Telugu, Hindi and English. You can listen to them. And in the um, second video, where I spoke about Buddhi Yoga, that the very first step in Rasopasana is to reconstitute yourself because you cannot practice love while identifying with the material body. I have given a detailed explanation of it, of all these things. We have limited time, so I, I don't think I can go on, uh, on that. So please listen to that video to get more uh, clarity about this. So these are the anarthas, Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Madam, Acharya. And then the relish of Prema is giving us bliss, unlimited bliss and everlasting bliss, which we seek. That is artha. And here, these six qualities are making us to go against the nature 
and it's spoiling everything. They are, they, these six qualities are spoiling our relationship with nature also, others and, and with ourselves also. We also become diseased and our relationships are also full of conflicts in the material world. We keep fighting with each other. And then we go against the nature and the nature gives us our natural calamity. So we get anarthas also. So because of identifying with them in the trigunatmaka material nature, he gets, the jiva gets anarthas. And how do we become free, free from anarthas? Anarthopashamam, upashamam. Sakshat bhakti yogam adhokshade. Adhokshada means Lord Sri Krishna who is divya. Adhokshada represents divya. It's beyond senses. And um, so bhakti yoga, we should, we should do bhakti yoga. And only bhakti yoga can uh, give you, make, liberate you from the man, this material identity. And then give you prema also. Why is it that we will discuss? And Bhakti Yoga Madhokshade, he, he did not use the word Karma Yoga Madhokshade, Jnana Yoga Madhokshade, Sanyasa Yoga, Karma Sanyasa Yoga, or Jnana Yoga Madhokshade, or Hatha Yoga. He is saying Bhakti Yoga Madhokshade. He practiced Bhakti Yoga, cleansed his heart, had the darshan, and he is also saying that you should do Bhakti Yoga. Because here he is uh, trying to propose, trying to describe the leelas of the Lord and propose prema as the purushartha, which is the true purushartha. That is where I am leading this discussion to. Bhakti yoga, uh, yoga madhokshade and lokasya ajanata. Because people do not know about these things. Even those people who are studying shastra, they only know about the four purushas, dharma, artha, kama and moksha. And Vyasa Sakre Satya Samhitam. So he wrote this book in order to specifically deal with the Prema Purushartha and propose Prema as the Parama Purushartha. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says Prema Pumartho Mahan. It is the uh, uh, fifth Purushartha and the real Purushartha. So now we will see why uh, the other karma, jnana, and all those cannot liberate you. You know, the Vaidhi karma that we do, as I told you that we do that basically, Vaidhi karmas in karma kanda are prescribed uh, for those who want to attain something in the material world. Jyotishto mena swarga kama ho jajeta. If you want swarga kama, do it. If you want, do it. Udbhida yajeta pashu kama. If you want pashu, do Udbhid. And Swarajya kama, Vistirna Rajya, if you want, Raja Surya na jayadeta. Raja Surya yaga. So now, this karma will get, you will get the results if you connect yourself God, then only you will get this uh, results of the karma also. This is because as I told you that as an embodied person, it is not possible for the mind to follow dharma. The desire is produced when the desire is produced, the desire by nature is against the dharma. And once the desire is fulfilled, you have to attain it. You cannot uh, uh, say that this is adharmic, so I will not do it. In Bhagavad Gita, uh, when Arjuna doesn't want to fight, Sri Krishna gives us this uh, formula. Vishaya vinivartante niraharasya dehina rasavarjyam rasopyasya param drishtuva nivartate. Vishaya vinivartante means, O oh Arjuna, even if you take your mind off the uh, sense, desires, sense gratification, Vishaya vinivartante from the Vishaya, niraharasya, for somebody who is not enjoying the material desires, once they are produced, uh, their taste is not going away. Rasavarjam. Vishaya vinavartante. Rasavarjam. Rasopyasya. Even this taste will go away. Param drishtu anivartate. So if you uh, get connected with the Absolute, if you start doing upasana of the Absolute, then only you will become free from these desires. Otherwise, there is no possibility of, of uh, becoming free from the desires. So by nature, you cannot follow dharma. Unless you uh, 
you are an upasak and you then do you do bhakti of Sri Krishna, sakama bhakti of Sri Krishna. So then he quotes a sloka bhoktaram yajnata padam sarva loka meheshuram sukhrutam sarva bhutanam jnatva maam shantim rachati. Shant, shanti here means freedom from this desire which are making you to go against the cloth of nature. Shanti means peace. And uh, uh, there is a difference between ananda and shanti. Bhagavad Gita is always talking about uh, moksha. Ahantvan sarva pape bhyo moksha ishami and uh, shanti. Because Arjuna is agitated, a person who identifies himself with the material body, he is always agitated because the body keeps producing desires and he keeps experiencing miseries by breaking the laws of nature. And then so he is also agitated. And then if he fulfills the desires, he is becoming greedy. He is developing more and more. His desires are doubled. That is also making him agitated. So what he seeks, the, 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 we were, the, the topic there is... Becoming free from this agitation. Becoming free from Papa. Attainment of Papa is not there in Bhagavad Gita. That is there. Uh, sorry, attainment of Prema is not there in Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita. It is there in Bhagavatam. So, uh, Lord Sri Krishna is saying that all these yajnas which you are doing, when you realize that even, if, even though you are doing it for various devatas, I am the actual bhokta. They all reach me only. And through me, they reach to other others because they are all um, parts of my Virat Swarupa. Yajna Tapadam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. I am the Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. Sukhrutam. I reside in your heart and I am your well-wisher, which means that I am the giver of all the benefits of your karma. Sukhrutam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatva Maam Shanti Rachati. By knowing this, you attain Shanti. Only then you will attain Shanti. Which means that you become free from these desires which go against the nature and you will be able to even follow dharma for the fulfillment of your uh, material uh, things, uh, desires. But actually, finally, uh, it is suggested that you do activity without these desires only and become liberated. That's a different thing. So the karma is sapekshika. The karma, the fruit for the karma will come only if you uh, understand Sri Krishna as your Sukhruta residing in your heart, giving you the fruits of your uh, action, so you worship him. So we do uh, our karmas. Those who do our uh, Nitya Naimitika karmas, they know Bhagavad Agniya, Bhagavad Kainkarya Rupana, Bhagavad Pritiyartham, Karma Karishya. We do when we do, no? Bhagavad Agniya. He is our Maheshwara. And then uh, he is our Lord. By his Agniya, which is given in the Veda, I am doing it. And as his seva, and as his preet, for his preeti, and if he becomes prasanna, then I get with this material results also for my sustenance. They may not be done for the sake of you know fulfillment of greedy desires, but for the sustenance also you need things. So, uh, you know, in, in order to get though that kama also, that artha and that kama also, you have to worship Sri Krishna while doing that activity, and this worship will purify your senses, purify you from the desires which make you to go against nature, which give you the strength to do the dharma and with which you can attain. So karma is sapekshika, it depends upon bhakti to adhokshada. And jnana also, uh, you attain jnana about doing who is Kshatriya and what is this, uh, what is the dharma of Kshatriya and then you do those activity, that activity. But again, you will not be able to do that because Kshatriya is a material identity. And when you get material identity, you will not develop a desire. Just because you think that I am a Kshatriya, you will not that develop the desire to do Kshatra dharma, Kshatriya dharma. It is prescribed to you in the Veda. You should do this duty. As a Kshatriya, you should do these duties. Right? But then that is not a natural desire for uh, the Maya Baddha Jiva. The natural desire is to have sense gratification. So that is why people get power and then they have, uh, they try to have unlimited sense pleasure using their power. In the, you can see that in the material world. The moment you get your power or get a role of a minister, chief minister, prime minister, this minister, that minister, you will not develop the desire to follow your duty. That is not your natural tendency. So in order to fulfill that also, you have to first 
in order to make your activity uh, you know doing your uh, duty uh, without going against the laws of nature that is to make your activity divya you have to understand uh, your connection with the divya lord janma karma cha me divyam evam yogate tatvada tyaktva deham punar janma naitima me tu arjuna I, i quoted this in the morning and sri krishna is saying that uh i am doing all this activity but without any desire because i have to establish dharma because i come here to establish dharma yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati whenever dharma resides from this material world in order to re establish dharma i come here i do all duties if i am take the form of kshatriya i follow all the rules if i take some other uh, uh, form in varna i follow rules there and when i do all these activities i am not attached to them i am doing only uh, for the sake of setting an example for the others to teach them how to follow dharma and why i am able to follow the dharma because i am unat- unattached i have no because i have a chinmaya body i can only love my body does not produce my chinmaya body does not produce any desire in me it does not produce karma so that is why i have no i have absolute vairagya for the material world maya and so i do these things in order to establish dharma so a kshatriya should also be like that like mahavishnu vishnu who takes the avatara that is why he is uh, uh, you know he is uh, seen as vishnu on earth so he should do his dharma without any attachment for uh, the material world and he should not try to use his power to fulfill desires he should become absolutely free from his uh, desires and then act then how can he do that how can he have this awareness and then his knowledge and act on that knowledge only if he uh, connects himself to lord vishnu realizes that he is the amsha of the lord and then do does all his duties all his uh, kshatriya dharmas by uh, becoming free from his desires by surrendering and practicing bhakti so gyana also depends upon uh, it is sapekshika depends upon bhakti to mahavishnu only bhakti can purify we quoted we just now understood from this bhakti yoga and samja pranihite amale and in the morning also we discussed in detail how bhakti purifies by reconstituting and cultivation of mamatva purifies us from all these things Uh, the whole process we discussed in the morning and then sanyas also naturally sanyasa is also not possible for uh, the mind which identify itself with the body it has to identify itself with the bhagwan and then practice bhakti and when you practice bhakti and when you surrender to him and, and when he performs this prakat leela prakat leela i will now uh, because we are coming to bhagavata we will discuss a little bit about prakat leela and aprakat leela also when sri krishna uh, comes here into the material world what exactly he is doing is that he is uh, in the spiritual world he is relishing love so when he comes he can only practice love with his devotees and he can only give prema but then this prema is possible only if the individual reconstitutes himself as the atma which he cannot do i told you in the morning it's impossible for him to practice abhyas also vairagya also and uh, for him to uh, for in order to establish him in dharma and remove all this uh, uh, negative thing, uh, tendencies in him the anarthas in him kam krodh lomo and also to establish dharma by uh, punishing demons like ravana and protecting the sages and all those people who are engaged in karma which they are not able to do because these demons are disturbing them in order to punish them and then protect them and establish dharma on earth this is job of mahavishnu mahavishnu is the maheshwara and he is also is a swa amsha of sri krishna ete cha amsa kala punsah when all this list of avataras are given in bhagavatam a line says at means these all these avataras 24 avataras or whatever number that is given there they are amshas at is amsha kala amshas and amshas and amsha small parts of uh, sri krishna krishna to bhagavan same but the original god is sri krishna 
So this Ram, Krishna, these forms are complete forms and they only do the leelas of love in the spiritual world. Because in the spiritual world there is no negative tendency or no demon. Uh, Lord Sri Krishna or Lord Brahma doesn't have to do paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya sadhuspitan there. That is required in the material world. And material world is governed by, overlooked by Mahavishnu, not Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna deals with only his parikaras, his premise. He loves his parikaras, parikaras love him, and then they do this leela of uh, prema, prema mai leela in the spiritual world. And it is the Mah Mahavishnu or Lord Narayana who is the uh, Ishwara of this. And through his gunavataras, Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, he is taking care of these worlds, doing the creating and maintaining, sustaining and destruction. Through Brahma, he is creating and through Vishnu, he is protecting and then through Maheshwara, he is destroying that. And then, whenever there, the dharma is not followed in the material world, this Mahavishnu is taking an avatar in order to do that job. What job? To demolish the demons, to protect the devotees, and then create a, and establish a dharma of that yuga. In Krutu Yuga, if he takes an avatar, he will establish a dharma according to uh, what the devotee, what the people here can do. And in Treta Yuga, because Dhyana is not possible, then he will establish Yajna as the Dharma. And in Dwapara Yuga, because Yajna also is not possible, I, I will discuss this aspect also and some other this thing. I, maybe I will make a YouTube video on that. Because if I go on, it will take some time. Uh, so we are now coming to the point of Prema as the Purushartha and Bhakti as the only Sadhana. So, uh, which is proposed by Vyasadeva in Bhagavatam. So, um, Mahavishnu comes and does this Leela. Sri Krishna comes here, gives Prema. So, Sri Krishna is, all, when the avatara is taking, avatar of Sri Krishna or Lord Rama is taking place, the Mula avatara, avatari is coming here in order to give Prema to all the sadhaks who have, by doing sadhana, are prepared to receive seva, that from the Lord. And then he is establishing that Prema, that sadhana, bhakti sadhana, rasopatana sadhana, he comes here along with his parikaras and then they perform these leelas, which I told you are written in Bhagavata and then in the form of kirtanas uh, by the sankirtana acharyas or rasik acharyas, which consists of nama, rupa, guna, leela, dham, parikara of Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna's naam is taken. Right? When we say Jai Jai Sham, Jai Jai Shama, Nam, and his room, Nila Mega Sharira, his form, and his Leelas, Makanchor Leela, this Leela, Gopi Leelas, and all those things. And his qualities, Bhaktavat Sadhya, Patita Pavana, he is, and Akaran Karun, his Gunas are described. So, all this, this to give all this, this sadhana, this Rasopasana, this Bhakti Sadhana, uh, he performed this Prem, prem Mai Leelas. And he, does, he gives only Prema. And the Avatara of Lord Narayana who comes in him. He is performing this Paritrana, Sayadurana, Vinayasaya, Sadhuskritana, Dharma Samstapana Lila. The Dharma Samstapana Sri Krishna is not doing. It is the Sri Krishna avatara of uh, Lord Vishnu. That, that is why uh, it is mostly believed that the Sri Krishna is an avatara of Mahavishnu. It is true to the extent that uh, this Sri Krishna who is an avatara of uh, Mahavishnu, is doing this Paritranaya Sadhana. And the Amshi of that Mahavishnu, who is Sri Krishna, the Swayam Bhagavan, he is taking avatara to give prema, not to do this leela. So there are two uh, avataras which are coming there in one form. The, uh, the Mula Krishna, in, from the Golok Vrindavan, he is coming to give prema, and the avatar of Mahavishnu, who is Sri Krishna, he is coming to give, do dharma, uh, dharma samsthapana. And so for sadhaka, uh, who, reconstitu who is unable to reconstitute himself, who experience or live as a self, with buddhi, by buddhi, he went to a guru and he understood that he is the atma and he is not the body. So now he is trying to do sadhana, he is not able to do. So the, this Narayana Avatara, Mahavishnu Avatara, who is Sri Krishna, that Sri Krishna gives him the strength, this sadhu self in us, as I told you in the morning, 
and it gives the power to this self, or through this, it demolishes this. It is the same thing. Even if I am doing sadhana, it is actually Sri Krishna is making me to giving the strength to uh, do that sadhana to me. And then he establishes me as a dharma. This is what happens at the level of Bhagavad Gita. That is why he told you it is a sopana. Bhagavad Gita is to the point where you get the power, knowledge and uh, uh, power to do the war. Arjuna, after taking instruction from the Lord, he performs war. He, he, he takes up the war which he is not able to do. Right? So, in the for the sake of sadhana, it means that uh, at the level of Bhagavad Gita, when I get all these instructions, surrender is the final instruction. And then when I surrender, when uh, the Mahavishnu Avatara Sri Krishna operates on me, he uh, gives me the strength, gives the strength to this self and gives the strength to demolish this self and then do sadhana, do sadhana and establishes me as my dharma, as atma and as a, as a uh, devotee of Sri Krishna, which is when I will be able to do sadhana. That is why Bhagavad Gita is a sopana and where Bhagavad Gita ends, there Bhagavata starts. And that is when you will be, you will not be seeking dharma, artha, kama and moksha. Dharma and, uh, sorry, you will not be seeking dharma, artha, kama and moksha and you will not be practicing karma yoga, jnana yoga like, like that. You will be practicing only bhakti yoga. Lokasya ajanataha yasya chakre sattva samitam bhakti yoga is the only solution. Anarthopashamam sakshat bhakti yoga. Bhakti is the only yoga. The, uh, the cultivation of love and the relish of that love is the only yoga that is practice. That is, and these four, now what do they become these four? Which people think that they are sadhanas. Karma yoga is a sadhana, jnana yoga is a sadhana. They become the limbs of this bhakti yoga. Right? I explain to you uh, them in detail and when we do, when we have a session of Rasopathana in future, I can show you how demonstrate you how those four limbs are practiced in Rasopathana, internally also, ex external. Internally means in the mind when you are meditating on the Lord and externally when you are doing seva of your Guru or when you are doing your uh, regular duties. How it is practiced externally and how it is practiced internally that we can discuss some other time. So now with all this Upadghata, we have come to the point that Vyasa is proposing uh, Prema as the Purushartha, which is the true nature of consciousness. Even Moksha is not a Purushartha, it is the cheating Purushartha. It is the cheating Purushartha because this desire for Kama is coming because of the identification body for Kama and so it is cheating. It, it doesn't belong to the Atma, it belongs to the body. And automatically the desire for the Artha for the fulfillment of Kama is also coming because, for the, because of the identification of uh, body, with the body. So that is also cheating. And this dharma which is proposed to you uh, according to the Varnashram dharma in order to get artha and kama and get material happiness uh, is also uh, um, because of the identification with the body. So that is also cheating. And how moksha can be cheating? That is also cheating because a person who is identifying with the body who is experiencing miseries in the place of happiness which he is seeking he wants to be liberated. And that also belongs to the person who uh, is Baddha, identified with the body. So it also belongs to the body, that is why it is also cheating. And um, that is, it's called as the cheating dharma is called, the word used is Kaitava dharma. In Bhagavata, uh, in the starting shlokas, it is written dharma prochita kaita votra paramo nirma saranam satam vedyam vastava matra vastu shivadam tapatra yon muranam. Srimad Bhagavate kimba pare rishore sajo hrujja varjati atra kruti bihi shushu shubi tatshana. Right? Here you see uh, dharma prochita kaita. So in this Bhagavatam, kaitava dharma is rejected. Right? A dharma which is uh, free from this Kaitava Dharma is proposed. And Sridhara Swami, who incidentally he is an Advaiti, he comments there, 
Uh, that this Kaitava represents even to moksha, not only dharma and artha and kama, but also moksha is a cheating uh, purushartha because it emerges from the identification with the body. It doesn't emerge from the identification with the atma. It is not the nature of dharma, it is the nature. It's not the nature. It is the nature of a uh, embodied person to, be li to desire for liberation. It's not the desire of a person who uh, identifies himself with the Atma. The nature of Atma is Prema. So Prema is the Purushartha. So here in Bhagavata, Srila Vyasadeva is saying and Sridhar Swami uh, with an Advaitin, he is uh, commenting that this work is um, propounding or proposing Prema as the Purushartha. And Prema it's a Prema Sanjatya Prema. Bhaktya Sanjatya Bhaktya. Means the Prema can be attained only if you practice Prema. It cannot be attained if you practice karma, which belongs to the body, jnana, none of these things. Right? So, uh, and it removes, it makes you free from this tapatra, tapatra yon mulana. It makes you free from tapatraya. Uh, naturally, because when you practice prema, identify with the body, and then Sri Krishna is, you surrender to Sri Krishna, identify with the Atma, you surrender to Sri Krishna, Sri Krishna is establishing you as a Dharma. The moment he establishes you as Dharma, automatically your desire is gone. Your desire is gone, so you don't disturb nature when you practice doing this sadhana. Anything that you do, you will do it for Sri Krishna, out of love for Sri Krishna, for the pleasure of Sri Krishna. You don't do it for your pleasure. It becomes a karma. It, it attracts karma only if you do an activity uh, in order to fulfill your karma, uh, sorry, your uh, desires. And since you are doing all these activities out of love for Sri Krishna and doing only those activities out of love for Sri Krishna, your karma becomes a seva, I told you in the morning, no? Your jnana becomes an anubhava of self. And uh, so, you because you are not disturbing the nature when you are doing all these activities, you will not get tapatriya. You become free from Tapatriya also. And this bhakti as an energy, it not only uh, make you not go against the nature, but it also burns off all the karmas which are there in your uh, uh, karana sharira. It burns the tendency to desire and uh, all the karmas, all the karma was from the root as, as, an, as you keep improving in your identity as Atma and as you keep developing Mamatva, this mamatva, just as sun comes only by demolishing the uh, darkness. This prema dawns by demolishing all this. Your vasanas, your vritti, your desire, your ignorance and your karmas. So you absolutely become free. So that is why it's saying that this prema, uh, tapatraya unmulanam. This dharma frees you from tapatrayas. Naturally. But you are not practicing moksha. You are not practicing prema uh, in order to become free from... Uh, the desire or bodily identity or tapatrayas. You are doing out of love for Sri Krishna. You are doing this sadhana. In order to cultivate love and in order to relish that love. To please Sri Krishna. I am doing my sadhana to please Sri Krishna by making his ruchi as my ruchi. Right? And then Bhagavata also says in the uh, first verses, Pibata Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Muhuraho Rasikaha Bhuvi Bhavukaha. Oh, all the bhavukas of this material world. Bhavukas means those who possess stable mood. Bhava for Sri Krishna, sthai bhava for Sri Krishna. Or those who are seeking sthai bhava, mamatva for Sri Krishna, which is prema, priti for Sri Krishna. Pibata bhagavatam rasamalayam. Means in this work, I am uh, uh, bhagavatam rasam. I am filling all this work with bhagavata rasa. Means the love, Bhagavata, as I told you, that which belongs to the Leela, the Prema, which belongs to Sri Krishna. And Bhagavata also means those who belong to Sri Krishna. So, I am describing the Leelas of uh, Sri Krishna and his Parikaras and the Prema, which uh, takes place in these Leelas. So, now Bhavukas, those who are seeking Prema as Purushartha, uh, listen to them. And then do the upasana on them, rasopasana, and then pipata relish that uh, rasam. Relish ras, pipata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Alayam means, laya means death. Alayam means even after death. Which means that while living, 
you practice rasopathana and keep relishing rasa and when you get perfected you get liberated and then when you take a spiritual form and go to goloka there also even after going there you will be doing the same thing you will be constantly relishing the love of sri krishna in the leelas you will be participating and relishing there here you will be meditating on them and you will be relishing uh, relishing them so bhagavata purana is basically a grantha which rejects the cheating propensity is called dharma artha kama and moksha and it proposes the true true purushartha which is prema and true sadhana which is prema sadhana rasopasana which means which is bhakti bhakti actually means that bhakti is the bhava and bhakti means or bhaj seva and seva also seva is the external manifestation of your the prema that you have a mother who has i gave you the example of mother in the morning mother does is able to do all that seva of the child right Be, only because she has love for him it is the love which is making her to do those uh, four things karma gyana sanyasa and dhyana so uh, bhakti means bhava also bhakti means uh, seva also so this is the sadhana and as i told you as i demonstrated to you from the perspective of uh, rasik rasopasana that karma is apekshika gyana is apekshika uh, sanyasa is apekshika and dhyana is apekshika all four of them depend on uh, bhakti so the intelligent person what will you do if bhakti is giving the results of karma gyana sanyasa and also and even that moksha is cheating it is giving the result, material results also dharma artha kama also it is giving moksha also and then all these four are cheating the only true uh, purusha artha is prema then why should i follow all those four things i will only directly do bhakti and that is shuddha bhakti prema bhakti it is called as prema bhakti in which it, you don't do any vaidik karma because you don't consider yourself as a brahmana you don't have to do all your nitya naimitika karmas that is for a person who identifies tavat karmani kurvita na nirvidyeta yavata मत कथा श्रवणादौवा श्रद्धा रतिर न जायते तावत मीन्स टिल देन यू शुड डू ऑल योर कर्मास टिल यू हैव यू डोंट हैव निर्वेदा निर्वेदा फॉर द मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड सो वंस यू स्टार्ट रिलीशिंग रियलाइज योर सेल्फ एज द डिवोटी ऑफ श्री कृष्ण एज द लवर ऑफ श्री कृष्ण एंड श्री कृष्ण एज योर ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ लव देन वाई डू यू वॉन्ट टू रिलीज दैट एंड वेन यू प्रैक्टिस यू डेवलप निर्वेदा and you start your bhakti uh, by trying to you know attain love sri krishna and uh, not to you know relish this material things so when you develop this you reject you don't have to do karma set on bhagavatam is saying and then mat katha shravana do va shraddha ratir na jayate till you don't get uh, rati taste for my leelas means till you don't develop the a uh, tendency to seek and get pleasure of the love of sri krishna why are you listening to sri krishna's leelas mat katha shravana why are you doing shravana because sri krishna's katha consists of is characterized by prema so if you become asakta for if you start desiring prema and if you consider pur prema at the purushartha then automatically you want to listen to those uh, leelas in order to cultivate mamatva follow in the footsteps of the parikaras of sri krishna and then get their guna so that you will get mercy of sri krishna and then you can get mamatva and you release that so there is no you don't do that karma at all so you reject karma gyana as understood by those people who follow vaidik dharma now you have gone beyond this vaidik vaidik dharma when you are doing rasopasana and uh, so uh, that so in order to bring us to this point of shuddha bhakti bhagavatam discusses the stories of various devotees in the first nine cantos it discusses about prahlad maharaj pandavas and dhruva and rishabdeva kapila devahuti and all these people are doing bhakti it's a bhagavatam so everybody is a devotee of lord krishna but for example pandavas are practicing karma mishra bhakti they do their respective karmas but uh, they do bhakti also out of bhakti for sri krishna they do follow this uh, dharma so it becomes a karma mishra bhakti you cannot take you know from the vedic 
instruction which the veda which de, uh, divides you according to the varnashrama and gives you dharma vaidik dharma for your identity you cannot suddenly jump to shuddha bhakti it's a big leap so that is why bhagavata is slowly taking us there to the shuddha bhakti so it is taking, it is giving us the examples of karma mishra bhaktas jnana mishra bhaktas and vairagya mishra bhaktas sanyasa mishra bhaktas and yogis people who meditate who go into the forest and meditate and uh, who, do, who do practice kapila deva sankhya yoga right there are also bhaktis if you study sankhya shastra this bhakti is not there in that and here there is bhakti so uh, because all these things depend on bhakti they perform uh, karma with bhakti jnana with bhakti so these examples are given and finally, when it comes to the realization, when the listener, after studying Bhagavad Gita and realizing that there is no way but to surrender to Sri Krishna, to even start. Surrender means not just going and teaching, taking mantra and all those things. Surrender means absolute surrender. That you depend upon him totally. And um, you decide to do only his bhakti and nothing else. So when you surrender, that is the instruction given there. And from surrender, after surrender, you practice karma mish. If you don't surrender, it's not possible for the uh, for Sri Krishna to act. For example, if there is a guitarist who wants to sing a song, and the, the, the strings are untuned, right? The strings cannot tune themselves. So he tunes them, and then he starts playing the song. Well, imagine if the uh, strings also have consciousness and the guitarist is trying to tune them and they are also trying to tune them. The strings are also trying to tune themselves. Right? There is a contradiction. It's not possible. Sri Krishna can operate you, will operate you only when you surrender to him absolutely. Which means that depending upon your surrender, the way you approach him, he corresponds uh, response to you. So if you surrender only 25%, he can operate only 25% on you. And then you will not move far in your sadhana. So you have, if you want to uh, attain your purusharta, you, you should surrender. From the beginning, you should decide to surrender. And that surrender is also not possible for the Maya but the Jiva because he is identifying with the body. In the morning, I told you that you have to surrender. But there is some glitch there also. You cannot, you can't even surrender. You cannot give up, give up your uh, ahankara. You cannot give up your desire. You cannot give up, you cannot surrender anything. So, what includes in surrender, we have beautiful kirtans on all these things in uh, Rasopasana. I wish I had time to sing those kirtanas and then explain to you. Um, but the, what we should understand in this theoretical uh, undertaking is that you can't even surrender. So you have to tell Sri Krishna that I cannot surrender. You are a patit power. Right? You have even though Putana has Putana was not doing any did not surrender to Sri Krishna. She was not doing any sadhana. Even though Putana has come to you in order to kill you. Right? You removed her all the evil anarthas from her and you liberated her and gave you the role of a mother next to Yashoda Maya's house in the spiritual. So what sadhana has she done? What surrender has she done? Don't ask me to surrender. I cannot surrender. You do whatever you want to do. Right? I am totally dependent on you. I offer myself on you. Then at, it, at that point Sri Krishna starts operating and you will be able to do any karma or any sadhana. Otherwise you will keep falling down. So then um, karma mishra bhakti is taught Jnana Mishra Bhakti is shown in Bhagavatam, examples of all this. And uh, other Vairagya and Dhyana is also shown. Prakriti Purusha Sankhya is also shown. And finally, when we realize through Shravana from our Gurudev, when we study Bhagavad Gita, understand the importance of surrender and total surrender, and then uh, understand uh, that uh, all these things, karma, jnana can uh, be fractified only if it is connected to bhakti. Then we realize that then we do bhakti only. Why should we do all these four things? So then we come to Dashamaskanda, where we have the playful leelas of Sri Krishna with this uh, devotees.
who do not follow any dharma. When Sri Krishna says, when they are following their dharma of worshipping Indra, it is a pratika, it symbolizes that them uh, doing their karmas prescribed to them in the Shastra. So they were doing worship of Indra and for the material, because she gives them rain and with rain they can get grains and all those things. So they are dependent on uh, Indra, so you have to worship. It is Parasparam Bhavayanta. It is written in Bhagavad Gita. And uh, it is, if you follow Karma Yoga as understood by the Vaidiks, you should be doing all these karmas as um, Bhakti of Sri Krishna. But then Sri Krishna rejects it. Don't do that karma. You don't have to do that. And because he cannot say, why he cannot say that I am Bhagwan? I'll tell you. Uh, he asked uh, to worship them to worship Govardhan. And he becomes Govardhan and he receives that worship. So they were worshipping Sri Krishna directly. Shuddha Bhakti they were doing. Not Karma Mishra Bhakti. So they rejected it. And this is a Leela. Nand Baba and all these people come from there to do this Leela in order to teach us to reject all that Vaidik Dharma, all this Karma, Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, everything, and just depend on Sri Krishna. Start loving Sri Krishna. And uh, so this Shuddha Bhakti is taught there. And Sri Krishna in Bhagavad Gita is saying, Manmana Bhava Mad Bhakto Majyaji Man Namaskuru. Right? And Sarva Dharman Paritya Mame Kamsharanam Brother. There he is saying directly that. But here Sri Krishna is saying, Worship Govardhana, not me. Why is it? Because there is a difference in all the forms which Lord Sri Krishna takes. Some forms are Aishwarya Pradhana and Madhurya Pradhana. Some are Madhurya Pradhana. Various gradations of Aishwarya and Madhurya are there in the unlimited avatara's form. Avatara here doesn't mean he's coming here. Avatara means all the forms which he has in the spiritual world. The 24 forms, 10 forms, uh, which are given in Bhagavata, they are not the only forms. He has unlimited forms. He is called an Akhila Rasamrita Murti by in Bhakti Rasam Sindhu, Mangala Charna Shloka. So he is relishing unlimited rasas in unlimited forms. And what uh, is the difference between all these forms is that this Aishwarya Madhugya, in the highest form, Swayam Bhagavan, which is Sri Krishna, Brajya Sri Krishna, Brajendra Nandan, there is only Madhurya in him. So that is why he is not saying, I am the God, you worship me, why, do you, why are you worshipping Indra? He is saying you worship Govardhana. Because in Prema, uh, in love, what pleases the beloved is that which is dear to him. Right? For Sri Krishna, Govardhana is dear because as a Gopala, he takes all these cows there. And the Govardhana has trees and they give shadow to the cows. And because cows are his beloved and Govardhana is providing shelter for the cows, so automatically Govardhana becomes his beloved. So, uh, if Govardhana is giving shelter only to Sri Krishna and um, Sri Krishna would be not happy as much as he would be happy if it is giving shelter to the cows. It is giving grass and trees for shade and all those things. So he is more pleased. As a premi, he is pleased if his cows are happy. Tatsuke suketon. So now because the Govardhana is pleasing uh, him by pleasing the cows, uh, he is happy. He loves Govardhana also. So now Govardhana becomes, cows become more worshipable. Govardhana becomes more worshipable than Sri Krishna himself. If you really want to please Sri Krishna, you should please uh, uh, those uh, whose happiness makes him happy. So that is why this is also a uh, small sukshma in uh, Prema. So that is why he is saying, one thing is that because he is Madhurya Swarupa, he doesn't want to project himself as God. He is saying that I am, um, uh, like, uh, he is not saying worship me. And he also, uh, because he is a premi, he is saying worship Govardhana. And in Bhagavad Gita, he is Aishwarya Pradhana. When, the, when Sri Krishna leaves to Madhura, there is more Aishwarya there. When he goes to Dwaraka, there is total Aishwarya there. Lord Narayana Nest is manifesting in him completely. There is less prema and more of a, so this is the difference between uh, all the forms of Lord Krishna. So now we have come to the point of doing Shuddha Bhakti in Bhagavatam 10th uh, Kananda. So when you come to that, when you surrender, because Bhagavad Gita is 
taking you to the point of surrender, when you actually surrender to Sri Krishna, you no more need. You don't need to take the instruction that you surrender again. You have already surrendered to your a guru and you only want prema. You don't want anything else. So Bhagavad Gita gone, Upanishads gone, Veda gone. And you come to Bhagavata. And when you come to the point of understanding that Shuddha Bhakti is uh, what you should be doing, so then you reject nine kinds. You don't listen to all those other kathas of Sri Krishna also. Then you come to here. Then you understand Aishwarya, Madhurya. Then you start worshipping Sri Krishna as Madhurya Krishna, Brajendra Krishna, not Dwaraka Krishna or Mathura Krishna. Right? And there also, there are various devotees in Braj also who have different kinds of rasas. There is Shantarasa, uh, a person who sees Krishna everywhere, but he doesn't have a tendency to desire to worship Sri uh, Krishna specially. He sees everywhere like Sanaka Sanandadana, Sanandadi. So they are Shanta Bhaktas. Then there is Dasya Bhakta. In Vrindavan, everybody has this Madhuri of Sri Krishna, so you will not get any. You can take the example of Hanumanji, who sees Lord Rama everywhere but also wants to serve Lord Rama. So his pleasure is higher than Shanta Bhakta because of the service. The service increases your, the service makes you happy and then you want to do more service. The grid develops here also, but it is spiritual grid. So because of this increase in Ananda, Dasya is more. But in Dasya, only when the master orders, you will do service. But in Sakya, when you become your friend like Bhima and Gwal Bal, you do special services for Sri Krishna. When Sri Krishna goes to Hastinapur, Bhima makes special kinds of, he is a very good cook for food, foods for Sri Krishna, newer and newer kinds of food in order to please him. Sri Krishna is not asking him. For Hanumanji, Lord Rama is ordering him. Right? So Sakya Rasa is more. And then more than that is Vatsalya Rasa. At 5 o'clock when Sri Krishna comes back home, mother drives away all them, all of them. Their arena is only... Uh, in the playground. So when it comes out, mother tucks, does special leelas. And mother thinks that even though he has eaten and he is uh, uh, taken bath in uh, Yamunaji, she always feels that, you know, I have to do more for Sri Krishna. She is not uh, fed enough. So she gives more. Friends know that they, both of them are satisfied what, uh, with whatever they have consumed. But mother still gives more. So she wants to do more and more service. And she has that special this thing for protection also. The boys, the friends will say, let us jump into Yamuna and then have fun. Mother will say, don't go into Yamuna. There are dangerous snakes there. Don't go towards bulls. So she always has this Ahita Shankha. Means something harm may happen too. So it is more intense love for Sri Krishna. So Vatsalya Rasa is more than uh, Sakya Rasa. And then Sringara Rasa is even higher there. Even when mother says, now you go and take rest. But the Sringara Naika, the, those who have conjugal relationship with Sri Krishna, they have they serve him with that Sringara mood all night. So that is even more intense. So, this, so then when you understand this, even when Uddhava comes to Vrindavan, he first offers uh, obeisances to gopis. When he sees their bhakti, he actually comes there to teach. But he's so fascinated by their bhakti, that this Madhura bhakti, where they see Sri Krishna everywhere. They ask Uddhava, where should I sit and meditate? Here Sri Krishna performed this Leela. Here Sri Krishna performed this Leela. So he is shocked. What can I teach them? So he offers obeisances to all of them. First two gopis. Next two mothers. Next two Gualbas. Showing us this hierarchy. Which is there in Bhagavatam itself. So we give up hearing Leelas of Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya and all these things. So then we come to the point of the Sringar Rasa. And in, even in Sringara, in Bhagavatam, that, uh, then we come to Rasa Pantajhai. I'm sorry, I'm taking a couple of minutes more at this time. I'm almost at the end. Uh, there, all the gopis go to Sri Krishna and suddenly gopis start feeling that, uh, becoming very proud that Sri Krishna likes them very much. So then suddenly he disappears from among them. And then the gopis become very mad because they have given up everything. For the service of Sri Krishna. They came with intent, loudly to serve Sri Krishna. And Sri Krishna had not uh, had disappeared. Then they start chasing and talking to trees, birds. Where is my Sri Krishna? Have you seen them? Then they, they see two pairs of legs. And one small pair of legs, one big smell of legs. And then they come up with this shloka. Then Anaya Aradhita Urunam. She is the one who knows how to do Aradhana to Sri Krishna. Right? We don't know. And uh, so that is... 
people say where is Radharani? All of you are worshipping Radha Krishna, but where is Radharani in, in, in uh, Bhagavatam? This is the verse. Because it's a Radha Shastra, it is given to us through Vyanjana Vritti. It is most confidential, confidential thing. And she is the Naika of Bhagavatam. Anaya Radhita, that Aradhana word is there in there. No, no, she is the one who knows how to worship. So in order to give them mercy, she, she also acts as if she has become uh, very uh, proud. And she asks Sri Krishna, tells Sri Krishna that I am tired, so please take me on your shoulders. So Sri Krishna disappears from there also. And she expresses extreme viraha. And then the gopis come there and all of them sing these gopi gitas. So which shows that only by the mercy of this Aradhana Surupa Radharani, you can get gopi bhav. So gopi, she becomes the naika. And Bhagavata stops there. She is the highest. Gopi bhav is the highest. Uh, Prema is the Purushartha, Sri Krishna is the Swayam Bhagavan, Gopi is Bhavi the highest. But this is where it starts. But the Rasika Acharas of Vrindavan say that you see, in devotion, we need to give pleasure to Sri Krishna. Right? And who is the one who can give highest pleasure to Sri Krishna? Is his Prema Shakti, Akladini Shakti, which is Radharani. And we get Prema by the mercy of Gopi Prema is the highest thing, but we get that Prema if we get. The mercy of Radharani, as discussed in this Leela, as shown in this Leela. Through Radharani's mercy, they get all the gopis get mercy. They become free from pride and they get actual prema from Radharani. So now, if we get prema from Radharani, it will be like only a drop of the ocean. Radharani is the ocean, prema agadha, and you are getting an only drop. Because you have drop of prema, when you go to Sri Krishna, you, will, you can only offer a drop to Sri Krishna. So what should be you, an intelligent person do? An intelligent person will not go, take the mercy of Radharani and go to Sri Krishna. If he wants to give the highest pleasure to Sri Krishna, he will take Radharani to Sri Krishna. So what has become the highest bhav, the highest become, bhav became the Sakhi bhav, wherein you consider yourself as a friend of Radharani, associate of Radharani, and you participate in the conjugal leelas of Radha and Krishna. How that is done, it's a very detailed subject matter. You became a Sakhi Bhav, not a Gopi, but you became a Sakhi. This is not there in Bhagavata also. So when you come to this platform to give the highest pleasure, you do Yugolo Pathana. You never worship Sri Krishna alone, even though you take mercy from uh, Prema from Radharani. You worship them together and for their pleasure, for their union. Uh, Sri Krishna, she is giving unlimited highest uh, pleasure to Sri Krishna and he is receiving highest pleasure and then you take pleasure in that pleasure. Their Sukha becomes your Sukha. You participate in this Leela. This is not there in Bhagavatam also. So then you reject Bhagavata also and you start doing Rasopathana by taking the Vanis of this. Bhagavat, Bhagavad Gita is leading you through surrender by teaching you Karma Jnana and all those things and after finally surrender it is leading you to Bhagavata. Bhagavata is leading you to this Jugalo Pasana of Radha and Krishna. Sri Krishna is Ananda, Radha and his Prema. A divine play of Ananda and prayer is taking place in the spiritual world. And you become a Sakhi of Radha and, and participate in this Lila. And that Upasana can be done only through the Vandi Grandas, neither from Veda, nor from Upanishad, nor from Bhagavad Gita, nor Namama, Nine Skandhas, nor Dashama Skanda, nor Vasa Panchate. Only from the Vanis of the Narasikachara so Vrindavan. So I in uh, it is a very you know huge subject matter. I went very fast. Maybe many of the concepts are uh, you know are uh, um, not clear. So we can if, uh, discuss in some other later stage, and you, you will get all these things from my YouTube channel. Sorry for extending for five minutes because of the subject matters. Because I have to explain all these concepts, no, at least at a basic level. Thank you very much, Dr. Srinivas Acharya. Uh, it's again, I keep using this term fascinating. Uh, wonderful uh, presentation and uh, so much to learn. Uh, viewers, if you have any questions, please put it in Q and A box. We'll just uh, we have 10, 10 minutes uh, so we can take some questions. Uh, as we wait, uh, Dr. Shri, uh, Srinivas ji, uh, one of the one uh, you mentioned about uh, Radha. So one of the notions uh, in uh, is that uh, one of the concepts uh, is that Radha is Ahladini Shakti of Krishna, right? 
So can you t- tell what this Ahladana means? What is this Ahladini Shakti actually? Yeah, Sri Krishna is the Raso Vaisaha and Ananda Brahmati Vidana. Both are in Taitri Upanishadandi, one after another. So as a Rasa Sulpa, he is a relisher of love. And relishing love, he is uh, becoming happy. Ananda means Ahlada. So he is getting Ahlada. Ahlada means Ananda. So he is getting Ananda from where? From his love potency. Love. He is relishing love and it is the love which is giving pleasure. Love is an energy. Right? So that energy, Shakti, is giving pleasure to Sri Krishna. That is why love is his Akhladini Shakti. This is in Tattva. But in Leela Kshetra, this Prema is there, has a form also. And that form is Radharani. Okay. Is a, tattva, you, are, you try to understand Tattva in order to enter into the path. But once you enter into the path, it is all Leela. In the Leela Kshetra, the Prema is taking, Sri Krishna is becoming Ananda, Ananda Sarupa, and Radharani is becoming his Prema. That is why it is, Radharani is his Akhladini Shakti. The one who gives pleasure to Sri Krishna, how she gives pleasure to Sri Krishna? Ple- you get pleasure by releasing love. So she is loving him, she is his lover. As a lover, she loves him, showers that love on him. And when he receives that love, she he releases that love and he becomes blissful. Wonderful. Uh... I think this whole, uh, the whole philosophy built around the uh, the Gopika and uh, Gopika Gitam and the Gopi Krishna and the Rasopasana, it it is very subtle and it is relishing. You know, the very philosophy is also. You right know, from the beginning, you don't have to <laughs> wait till Chitta Nitra and Nivrti Nimodi is done. You don't have to do Shama, Dama, Titiksha, Uparati, Karuna, all these things. Right from the beginning. You desire to love Krishna and the moment you start doing Kirtana and then you can extract love from the beginning. Wonderful. wonderful. So, one question we have received is, uh, Buddha and Kalki avatars correspond to what in Rasopasana? Are these avatars in pure love or not? Uh, so, he was just wants a clarification. On. Yeah, as I told you, that Sri Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan. When the Upanishad is saying he is Rasa Vaisaha, it is actually, it is referring to, to Sri Krishna. And when he is taking unlimited avataras, as the Aishwarya is increasing, the intensity of that avatara, is all, that Ras is also decreasing. The Ras which Sri Brajendra Sri Krishna has, the Sri Krishna of Dwapara does not have that. Uh, sorry, Dwaraka. And uh, uh, Sri Krishna of Mathura doesn't have that. Parikara Vaisishtya, avatara Vaisishtya. The Parikaras of uh, Dwaraka, Rukmini, are not like Viraha Bhaktas, like Gopis. Because they own Sri Krishna as husband and they know that Sri Krishna will come back after 5 o'clock. So they don't have much Viraha. But the Gopi doesn't own, she's a lover. So when she leaves Sri Krishna at, uh, in the night at 12 o'clock and goes back home, she is not sure whether she, will, she can meet Sri Krishna again. So the, she has intense Viraha which makes her mm, Milan strong. So the Rasa keeps coming down, but it, that doesn't mean that. Uh, Sri Krishna from Dwaraka is less satisfied. Om Purna Madha Purna Vidam Purna Purna Mudachal. That is also Purna. But for us, in Tattva, we understand that this is a complete rasa. So now every avatara also has a function in this material world. Lord Rama comes to establish dharma. Varahatara comes to reclaim that Vedas. Narsimha Swami comes for some other thing. Sri Krishna comes for giving love. Prema Bhakti. He rejects. Gopis want to follow the Patibrata Dharma, but he does the Patibrata Dharma Bhanga. It is all useless, he says. Love me. I am your only lover. Right? So, Buddha is an avatara of Sri Krishna which came here because people were abusing all these Vedic injunctions and they were engaged in the slaughter of animals. Right? Using uh, 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 Vedic injunction as a sanction, he came in order to, you know, make them not to do those, use animal sacrifice in their rituals. He has to reject the uh, root cause of that itself. So he uh, said no Veda. He rejected Veda itself. He is an avatara, but he came with a function. And his platform, his, his was only, purpose was only to demolish all those uh, sacrifices and himsa they are doing. And then rebuild again, establish dharma again. So he did the demolishing part of it, and the later avatars came 
slowly according to us adi shankara came and then he established brahman he said shunya so he said brahman and then when he established brahman then ramanuja bhagavad ramanuja got a chance to establish the introduce bhakti there form there and madhvacharya got the chance to establish tarakamya in rasa and then chaitanya mahaprabhu got a chance to establish the whole hierarchy and establish sri krishna as swayam bhagavan and gopi bhava vidyalaya so it's a, it, everybody everybody has a function so buddha is like that kalki also when then all dharmas go away so in order to demolish all these papis who are there so he comes so they are all the avatars of this mahavishnu who are coming and establish you know uh, establishing dharma paritrana and sadhana but rasopathana belongs to the swayam bhagav who is the person if he who releases own love he does not do all this marthad markat leela <laughs> you only keep stop ah uh, okay <laughs> So uh, one final question uh, uh, we can take. Uh, only one question has come. Uh, how is the context of Rasopasana relevant in today's day-to-day life or career? Unlike Gita, which we are uh, which we are aware to to some extent. You know, in this, uh, uh, can I take five minutes to explain this? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. In, uh, you know, all of us have. family friends and we have a community society nation we are all one earth everybody wants to love uh, and everyone body wants to live peacefully and uh, you will be able to you know be together with each other only if you have love two generations back our grandfathers you know they they their lives were based on love we keep hearing that love is going away from everybody divorces are taking place and parents are put in the old age homes all these things nobody is following their dharma because there is no love right and we are not getting we are becoming uh, uh, we are not uh, this love is decreasing as i told you only because uh, when we identify ourselves with the body this body develops kama krodha lobha moha madha masari and that contaminates this love the more kama you develop the less love it is for example you love some girl right you see i love that girl but kama is also involved in that you want to take pleasure from her body so you are loving corresponds to the amount of pleasure that body gives to you but as you uh, you know uh, have pleasure from that body because that body is material its efficiency to give you pleasure goes down and your desire to get pleasure from that body goes up but she is not able to give that pleasure to you so you are because your love is contaminated by that kama and you uh, that goes down for it your love goes down so love is only possible even the material love with your parents with your children with your nation is possible only if you reconstitute yourself as atma and start loving shri krishna when getting connected with shri krishna when you get connected with shri krishna you get love from him and this love because you become a lover you can love anybody in this world and if you are not connected with that love in you know often husband you see husband and wife start fighting lover start fighting after a few months and they are complaining each other when they are complaining with each other what are they saying that you don't love me and he is saying you don't love me which means what they are expecting love from the other person when they are expecting love from the other person they are actually not the lover they are beggars of love and how can two beggars of love give love to each other two beggars who are sitting under a tree they can get money from a person who is rich so all of us in this material world because of our identification with the body we are like beggars of love we can get love from we can get love only from the personification of called shri krishna when we worship him and when we do rasopatana we get love from him and then we uh, can love each other in this material world and we become intact as a family as lovers this is one thing and one small sorry uh, this one last thing also i have to say you know uh, how to attain material success how to do our excel in our material things and how rasopasana can contribute for that is that you see the whole world is not able to understand why indians are becoming so successful right they are becoming premiers of other countries where they have gone and they are becoming ceos 
This is because, you know, the whole, uh, in order to do something in the material world, excel in the material world, you should have good IQ. The more IQ you have, the more you will be able to perform in this material world, right? But when you identify yourself with the uh, body, this uh, whole system is becoming a repressive mechanism. The education system, family, because when the desire is produced, for example, the desire is produced in the child when you give him modern education. And now in a, he wants to play, but you are sending him to the school. And repressing in desire is becoming very violent. That is why he develops aggression. And when he comes back, he watches all those PUBG and then all uh, WWF programs when one, some, one person is killing other, one person is beating the other person. So he's doing that because whatever he's repressed, he's purgating. Which means that this repressive mechanism, when you work, when you do the work, it's becoming in the repressive mechanism. And if you don't purgate, next day you will not be able to do your job. So you need purgation on Saturday and Sunday in order to work again Monday. Right? But Indians, when they go there, if, if, if a doctor, let us say, asks a nurse that today there is an emergency case, please stay till 7 o'clock. She says, no, I will put a case on you if you harass me. I have to work only till 5 o'clock. Uh, that isn't the contract. And then I am paid for that. She's saying like that. It is appearing like a harassment for her because she has repressed her desires from 9 to 5. And now she has to go to some rock concert or have sex with her boyfriend to purgate all that. Right? And she needs that. But for an Indian who goes to America, he takes this emotional quotient and goes there. He's not just going there to earn money and then become happy by uh, himself, sense pleasure. He's thinking that when I go there, my, my parents have sacrificed so much for me. So I will go there, earn a lot, and then give all facilities, send money to India, give facilities to my parents and give them happy. So when the boss is asking him to work till 7 o'clock, for the American or the Westerner, it is appearing like repression. But this fellow becomes very happy. Why is he become very happy? Because of his emotional quotient, he's feeling that if I work for two more hours, I'll get more payment and I'll make, and make my parents very happy. So the same work is giving pleasure to an Indian who has emotional quotient, love for his parents, and for the Westerner who is only working based on IQ but not knowing with zero emotional quotient. So that is how even this emotional quotient or the love helps you in this material world not to become repressed by in whichever setup you are. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Srinivasacharya, for a very unique perspective on the issue. Uh, thank you very much on the behalf of uh, entire Indica Moksha and all of our viewers for making time uh, to speak on this wonderful topic. Uh, very, uh, uh, I think, more, uh, more enunciation, more discussion on the topic will be very, very useful. Uh, so hopefully we could do that in future. So thank you for making time for this session. Uh, we just do follow us on Facebook and Twitter for announcements about our upcoming events. We'll bring more uh, such talks and uh, interviews and other, other things uh, to you. Uh, with this, we conclude the session. Shri Guru Pyonama.